come join me on a tour of the Chicago Riverwalk. Wanderlust Woman back again for another video and we are just cruising around during the beautiful day exploring the Chicago River and what better way to do this than the Chicago Riverwalk. The Chicago Riverwalk is a mile and a quarter long path that is open to the public. Now walking along this path is one of the best ways to experience the city as it provides close proximity to the waterway. It has a bountiful amount of options of entertainment and dining. But most notably, it provides some outstanding views of some world famous architecture that can be found in Chicago. The Riverwalk stretches all the way from the Loop, West Loop Divide to Lake Michigan. It is open from the hours of six in the morning all the way until 11 at night. So it's really flexible based on whatever time constraints you may or may not have. In addition, you can experience this beautiful place with the natural daylight reflecting off the buildings or with the beautiful illuminations that the city provides that will be reflecting off of the water. So they both are magical, unique times that are great to experience this place. If you are heading from west to east, one of the first buildings you'll come across is going to be the Merchandise Mart. Now, you will notice this because it is exceptionally wide. Girl, you're thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Which probably explains why it was chosen for Art on the Mart, which is an event where different uh, media or art will be projected onto this building and people will gather all along to watch it at night. So it's a really cool building with a really cool event that is attached to it. Very close by, you can spot the Reed Murdoch building. This is a seven-story office building that was opened all the way back in 1914. In addition, you can spot this with its very distinct clock tower. The next site to catch is going to be Marina City, or the Marina Towers. These were constructed back in 1967, and they operate not only as residential spaces, but they simultaneously look like real life corn on the cob or a honeycomb. So it's very cool, very distinct buildings. Right across the river, you should keep your eye out for 777 Wacker Drive. I really like this building at night because when it's illuminated, it has a really picturesque dark silver slash white gold color that looks really distinct and really pretty. Heading further east, you will come across the architectural hub of the city, in my opinion. And you will likely first notice the Trump International Hotel and Tower. And although it is a little bit politically controversial, it definitely is architecturally sound. I really love this building, this skyscraper. The building doesn't even begin to describe it. It has a very modern design and a grayish blue hue depending on the light that particular day. Adjacent to the Trump Tower, you will see the Wrigley Building, which to me, feels like the heart of the Loop and downtown Chicago. So the Wrigley Building is actually two buildings. It is a 30-story South Tower, which is connected to the 21-story North Tower via a 14th floor elevated walkway. So it's a really iconic building. It has a very noticeable bell tower and clock, and I really love the white terracotta design. It's probably one of my favorites. To the right of the Wrigley Building and a little bit behind, you will see the Tribune Tower. This is a Gothic tower that was completed in 1922 and to me it looks like it was plucked straight out of Lord of the Rings or some medieval high fantasy movie, if you catch my drift. Following the Du Sable Bridge, which connects Michigan Avenue across the Chicago River. If you follow this back, you will see the London House right across from these three skyscrapers I just mentioned. And the London House is another skyscraper which 
functions as a luxury hotel and it also offers some rooftop dining and drinking, providing amazing views of this beautiful area. I really love this area because these three or four distinct buildings are heavily different from one another. They contrast each other a lot and add a lot of depth to this area. There are so many more really cool and interesting buildings to be seen along the Chicago River. So first of all, right near the Ducible Bridge, Ducible, Ducible, I'm not exactly sure what the pronunciation is, TBH. You can see the Apple Store, which sounds a little bit generic, but at night especially, it's illuminating, it's really well lit, and it's completely made out of glass. Well, maybe not completely, but that's what it looks like from a distance. So it's really pretty, keep your eye out for it. Further towards the lake, you will see the NBC Tower with its very uh, recognizable logo that you can easily distinguish in the night sky. A little bit further down, you'll also see the Sheraton Grand Chicago, which is a hotel in another really cool building that you should definitely keep your eye out for. And a little pro tip, if you peek between these buildings on the north side, you might be able to catch a glimpse of the John Hancock Center, AKA 875 North Chicago Avenue. And that is pretty of a name. Now, one of the last major sites that you should try and catch a glimpse of is going to be the St. Regis Chicago, previously named as the Vista Tower. Now, this is probably the curviest tower you've ever seen, and you can recognize it by its bodacious body. And on a sunny day, it's a really beautiful, brilliant blue. So it's one of the coolest, more unique buildings that you'll see, especially in this portion of the Riverwalk. The wonderful thing about the Riverwalk is, like I said in the beginning, there is more to it than just the architecture. So if you're walking along and you wanna stop someplace along the way, there are countless restaurants. If you've walked up, if you've worked up an appetite walking, if you've walked up an appetite working, which, does that make sense? No, it doesn't, not at all. In addition, there are lots of different cafes that you can stop at. There is a winery, there is a beer and cider garden. And if you feel a little frisky and wanna get a little permisky, well, not exactly that, I'm just trying to make a bad rhyme, then you can hit up the Island Party Hut, which although a lot of these are currently closed at the moment, I'm sure when the weather gets warmer and the cove takes a little, uh, takes a little break, hopefully, then these will all be open and you can hit them all up to enhance and to add a little bit more flavor to your experience of the Riverwalk. Now, if you're not up for walking or maybe you just want a slightly different experience, then you should look into doing a boat tour. These start more towards the east portion by Lake Michigan and they will take you throughout the Chicago River with guides to tell you about the historical facts and the details about your surroundings. It's a little bit touristy, but I'm sure it'd be a lot of fun and I still think I would like to do it once while I'm in the area. Speaking of unique and different experiences, did you know that there is no better place to be during St. Patrick's Day than the Chicago River? Yeah, I know, I know, Dublin's probably better. But it's a really cool experience and I highly would recommend it because although I can't vouch for the, the safety and how it might affect the river uh, ecologically wise, but the whole river is dyed green and it's really pretty. It's a really unique site. I've never seen a river that is such a strong, bright green and a lot of people are out enjoying the festivities and the unique sights that will be Bestow it upon your eyes. So that's the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more travel and Chicago content. My mask is slipping down a bit. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.